students. Today we are going to treat polynomial functions. And when we talk about a polynomial, a polynomial is any expression or equation which has a particular number of degrees. Okay? The highest degree will tell you the type of polynomial we have. So if I have f of x to be equal to 2x plus 3, this is a polynomial of degree 1. Okay? If I have g of x equals to 4x squared minus 3x plus 5, this is a polynomial of degree 2. So if I have a cubic function, h of x equals to 7, 5x cubed minus 3x squared plus 4x minus 5, this is a polynomial of degree 3. So these are polynomials, okay? So one thing we should know is we can add polynomials, we can subtract polynomials and so on and so forth. So if I tell you if p of x is equal to 7x squared plus 3x minus 9 and q of x is equal to 9x squared minus 3x minus 15 and I ask you to evaluate let's say i, p of x plus q of x. So it means I'm going to add just p and q. So addition is very simple. So you have 7 plus 9. So you should have um, 7 plus 9 to be equal to 16x squared. And then 3 plus minus 3, which is 0. And then minus 9 plus minus 15, which will give you minus 24. So therefore, you can say this is equal to 16x squared minus 24. Now, when we say addition and subtraction, we all know how to add and subtract. So I don't need to stress so much about this. You understand? So you just add your like terms. If x cubed, we'll add x cubed. x squared will also add x squared. x will add x, and then we, um, constant will add a constant. But don't go and add 7x squared plus minus 3x. No, we don't do that. Okay? So each coefficient will add its what? Corresponding coefficient. The same thing applies to what? Subtraction. Okay? Now, when it comes to division, as even I ask you to divide x cubed minus x by, let's say, x plus 1, okay? Now, dividing this, we shall have x plus 1 divided by x cubed minus x. Now, x cubed minus x doesn't mean that there's no um, value of x squared and so on and so forth. You know, if I have x cubed, 3x cubed, minus even 3. This means that this is 3x cubed plus 0x squared plus 0x minus 3, okay? The coefficients of x and x are also there, but just that they are zeros, okay? So x cubed minus x can be written as x cubed plus 0x squared, okay? Minus x minus what? 0, okay? So this means that we have x cubed minus x, where this is 0 and this is 0. The constant is also 0. So now we divide. Now, if this is x and this is x cubed, what do I multiply with x to get x cubed? You tell me it is x squared. So I put x squared here. So x squared times x is what? x cubed. x squared times 1 is what? x squared. Okay? We subtract. This will give me 0. Now, 0x zero squared minus x squared will give me minus x squared. It's like having 0 minus 1. You get minus 1x squared. Then I bring my minus x down. So over here, we shall have x squared times x is x squared. Ooh. x squared times x is x cubed, and x squared times 1 is x squared. Very good. So x cubed minus x cubed is 0, and 0x zero squared minus x squared is minus x squared. Then we bring our minus x down. Now if I have minus x, and this is x, what do I multiply with minus x to get x? That will be minus x, okay? So what do I multiply with x to get minus x squared? It will be minus x. So minus x times x is minus x squared. Minus x times 1 is minus x. We subtract. This will give me 0, and this will also give me 0. So I have 0, and this is also 0. So if I should divide x cubed minus x by x plus 1, I get a factor of what? x squared minus, my quotient is x squared minus x. Okay? And it leaves a remainder of what? Zero. So if we should divide x cubed minus x by x plus 1, it leaves a remainder of zero <coughs> and a quotient of what? x squared minus x. 
So one thing you notice is, if you have a, a linear function, you have x plus 1, this is linear, OK? When you have a quadratic function, let's say x squared plus 5x plus 6, if you factorize it, you get x plus 2, x plus 3. So this is also what? Quadratic, right? So if we have a cubic function, x cubed minus x, OK? And once you factorize this, this will also give us x plus 1. Then we shall also have, um, when you factorize x, as you have x minus 1. So x, comma, then we have x minus 1. So these are the three factors. If we should multiply, so we multiply this times this times this to get this, OK? So we have what? x cubed minus x. So this is a cubic function. Mm -hmm. A cubic function. So what I'm trying to say here is, if you have a linear function, it means these factors are what? Ax plus b for linear, OK? For quadratic, we can have Ax plus b, and then what? Cx plus d. That is for quadratic. And then for cubic, there will be three factors, OK? So we shall have Ax plus b, let's say Cx plus d, and then Ex e x plus what? h. There are three factors when it comes to the cubic one. So for quadratic, we have two. Linear, we have only one. OK? So when we talk about a cubic function, OK, it means when we should divide it, we can get three factors. That is a cubic function. So what you see here is one factor, because it leaves a remainder of 0. OK? And the other factors are x squared minus x. And you see if I have x plus 1, and then x squared minus x. In the first one, I can have x plus 1. This will give me x out, x minus 1. OK? So I can have x plus 1, x, and then x minus 1 as my factors. So if this is equal to 0, you realize that x equals to negative 1, x is equal to 0, and x equals to positive 1 are the factors of this um, x cubed minus x. So now, these are the zeros of the function x cubed minus x. OK? And the factors are x plus 1, x, and x minus 1. Now, we have what we call the remainder theorem. Now, if I have a function p of x, assuming I have a function p of x to be equal to x cubed minus x, OK? And I want to check whether if I put 1 inside, I'll get 0, you see? So if I put p of 1, OK? Because or if, even if I put P of negative 1, I want to find the remainder, OK? Let's assume that I want to find the remainder of this. When I divide um, x cubed minus x by x plus 1, I want to find the remainder of this. So this function, so P of negative 1. What is going to happen here? I put the x plus 1, I equate it to 0, and I solve for x to get negative 1. Let's put P of negative 1. This will give me negative 1 cubed minus negative 1. Negative 1 cubed is? Negative 1, negative, negative is possible so plus 1. This will give me a remainder of what, 0. We call this the factor theorem, OK? So if I want to find the remainder or the remainder theorem, OK? The remainder, when I divide something by something, OK? Let's say a function by, let's say, a linear function. So assuming I have p of x to be equal to 2x cubed minus 3x squared plus 5x plus 7. And I want to find the remainder when I divide it with, let's say, um, x plus, let's say, 2. OK? I want to find the remainder. So I just put p of what? I equate this to 0. So p of negative 2. So x plus 2 is equal to 0. x is equal to negative 2. p of negative 2 will give me the remainder. So watch. This will be 2 into negative 2 cubed. So we have 2 into negative 2 cubed minus 3 into negative 2 squared plus 5 times negative 2, plus 7. So this will give me um, negative 8 times 2 is negative 16. Then we have 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. And then 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. And then I have 7. So my final answer becomes, this will be negative 3, negative 15. Negative 15 plus negative 16 is negative 31. So it means that if I should divide 2x cubed minus 3x squared plus 5x plus 7, the remainder will be negative 31. Let's find out about that. So let's find out about that. Now, I'm saying that let's divide this x plus 2, 
Okay, we are dividing 2x cubed, 2x cubed minus 3x squared plus 5x plus 7 by 2x or oh, x plus 2. Now, if this is x and this is 2x cubed, what do I multiply with x to get 2x cubed? You told me it's 2x squared. So 2x squared times x is 2x cubed. 2x squared times 2 is what? 4x squared. We subtract. This will give me 0. Minus 3x squared minus 4x squared will give me minus 7x squared plus 5x. Now, if this is x and this is minus 7x squared, <coughs> what do I multiply with x to get minus 7x squared? It's minus 7x. Minus 7x times x is minus 7x squared. Minus 7x times 2 is minus 14x. Again, we subtract. This will give me 0. Then 5 minus minus 14 will become 5 plus 14, which is 19x plus 7. Now, if this is x and this is 19x, what do I multiply with 19 to get... Uh, what do I multiply with x to get 19x? That will be positive 19. 19 times x is 19x. 19 times 2 will give me 38. We subtract. Now, this will be 19 minus 19, 0. 7 minus 37, 38 will give me minus 31. So my remainder, indeed, is equal to what? Minus 31. So you could see that for me to get a remainder is very easy. Just put in whatever you have there. If you have been asked to find a remainder, okay, you can just put the uh, factor there and see whether it gives you a zero or not. If it gives you a zero, it means this x plus 2 is a factor of this. But since we are not getting zero, it means x plus 2 is not a factor of this function 2x cubed minus 3x squared plus 5x plus 7. Okay? So it leaves a remainder of what? Because it leaves a remainder of negative what? 31. Okay? Now, when we talk about polynomials, we talk about so many things. Okay? Like I said, for linear one term, ax plus b, quadratic, we have two terms, ax plus b, cx plus z. For cubic, there will be three terms, ax plus b, cx plus z, and then ex plus h. Okay? So depending on how you are told, you can be asked to factorize a polynomial. Okay? So assuming you are asked to factorize a polynomial like this, 2x cubed minus 3x squared plus 5x plus 7. Let's say the polynomial is p of x equals to this. What you do is, you are going to put in numbers here, okay? That will make you get zero. So you can start with zero, negative two, positive two, five, negative five. You keep doing your try and error, okay? So you get a number that will give you zero. So assuming, assuming that I put P of three, okay, into this, and I realize that I get zero, okay? It means that x minus 3 is a factor of this polynomial, okay? And since x minus 3 is a factor, I'll just divide this with x minus 3 to get the other factors over here, which will be my quotient, okay? And when x minus 3 is a factor, and getting my quotient, I also factorize my quotient, which is in the form of what? A quadratic expression, okay? I also find, uh, factorize it, and then that will give me the other factors. If you are asked to find the zeros, it means you are going to equate this to zero and this also to zero and then get a, factorize it and then equate it to zero and get, get your zeros of what? Your polynomial or zeros of your function. So let's pick an example and solve. 